honoring their mother on Mother's Day. So. Good to have mothers that are alive, huh? Yeah. Yeah. The ones that passed on, boy, memories, and good things to have. Yeah. Mommies are special. They're different. They got a lot to do. Did you see in the paper this morning, there's a couple in Bikes County that just had four little four girls. girls. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they had them all in the paper. They're what? Three months old? Two months Born in January. January. Yeah. And they were the cutest thing. Four months. He had two with bottles. She had two with the bottle. Tell you what, that'd be a full time job. That's not fun. I'm telling you. One. That wouldn't be fun, pretty. That's not fun. That's not fun. No rest. That's where that no rest for the weary comes in. Right. All right, now let's go to Revelation 6. We're going to just. Thank God. We're just going to review today. You got that on? Yes, sir. We're just going to review today since we got a lot out. And, uh, all right, come back. Come back. <coughs> play, would you? Play. Play. Well, Mom and another friend yeah. are traveling this week. They're on a cruise. So. Oh, yeah. so they'll be out. They're going to Jamaica. Yep, they're going to <laughs> sail the Caribbean. So good to good to be able to do that. So. <laughs> All right. Let's just let's just we're going to uh, um, just go over what we had previously caught on the four seal. And then, to, uh, not ne now, next Sunday, uh, Bob's going to do Sunday school next Sunday. <laughs> I kind of forgot I was going to let y'all do them in between, but uh, you got you got it next Sunday. Brother Ernie will be here, so well, I'll be under anticipation of that. So you do Sunday school, and then the next time we have it, we're going to start on the fifth seal. So now we've got one, two, three, and four, right? Yeah. All right, we got to the fourth seal, and, and obviously there's five, six, and seven. But as we've shown before, we can break this down into parts, and, it, and you can understand it a lot better. Right. Okay? Because if you go, see, you can go here, you look, justification, sanctification, the Holy Ghost, and then the Word. The Word at its capstone Revelation all the way up, but that fourth seal. Look, it took a prophet to tell us that. There's nowhere in that fourth seal that tells us there's going to be a rapture. Nowhere. Right? It doesn't plainly say, and after the fourth seal, the rapture is going to take the Gentile bride up. No. But when the prophet, and look how simple it is, though. He's on the fourth seal. Well, he gets to the fifth seal, and the angel says, Well, where's the combat be? In other words, I'm just saying that's what happened because Brother Brown didn't know it. Right. He didn't right. know what the fifth seal was. He said he did. Because I don't think that the angel that brought him the revelation of those seals or brought him the, the word for the seal, he couldn't reveal it to him because it was an angel. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ had to reveal it to him through his new birth. Mm -hmm. So the angel couldn't say, now the rapture's going to take place on the fourth seal. The prophet would say, well, how do you know that? In other words, all he'd have to do is say, look in the fifth seal, and do you see any combat beast? Now, you being a prophet, you know that the combat beast is what? The Holy Ghost. <coughs> in the believer. Yes. Right. right? The combat beast, actually the combat beast is all the way from here to here. Right. 
and then takes you all the way up. What I'm saying is you got your lion, ox, man, and eagle. That's the whole bride. That's not just us. That's the whole bride of Jesus Christ from the day of Pentecost till the day we go home. All right? So now, just in plain language, if you don't see those combat beasts anymore, then they must have went somewhere. And we know if they're eternal, they didn't die. Right. They went somewhere. Right. Right? Because right. they disappeared. Yes. So the, here is God through all the church ages, through the lion, ox, man, and eagle, and then all of a sudden, they disappear. Well, it's, they is not the lion, ox, man, and eagle. They is the bride that the lion, ox, man, and eagle is working through. <coughs> so he comes up to the fifth seal, and, you know, the angel could say, well, William Brown, what do you say? And he could have said, I, you know, scratched his head. Well, I, I don't know anything about this. He said, well, where's your combat be? And being a prophet, he absolutely, first thing, he put the word together and said, somebody's missing. Somebody's missing in this next seal that was in these other four. Something's missing, so there must be something to take place. So then Brother Brown said, right, take place on the fourth seal. And that's exactly correct. All right? But now look. Because when we get into 5, 6, and 7, we must know one thing's for sure that something's got to work in a higher order. Okay? Not just, you know, like we said before, you got, you got baby form justification, sanctification, and then the baptism of the Holy Ghost, right? Mm -hmm. All right? Then you've got Justification, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Ghost, what? In the pyramid. Yes. Alright? Right. Then you got justification, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Ghost in the believer in the headstone. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's the same justification, it's just working in a higher in a higher realm. Right. More word. So then we look here and we take this here and we know if the rapture takes place, then we know this is definitely to the Jews. Right? right? right. It's all to the Jews. But we know we're gone and nothing in that fifth seal refers to me and you as a natural happening. Right. Yeah. Got it? Yes. Natural happening. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, but supernaturally, though, what's God doing? He's taking us right back through, and we're going to see justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. And remember, we got to go into an eight, which is what? Which is the future home. Why I say future home? Because, see, sometimes you can, you can argue and say this and it, but we know one thing's for sure. When we walk in the gates of that future home, there is no somebody left here, somebody left here, somebody left down here, somebody left over yonder, there's not a this, there's not a that, right? Right. That's why I love that message of future home because Brother Brown says, I've taught justification, sanctification, baptism, and Holy Ghost since the day I started, and he said, it looks like this city is going to be come from the same thing. Alright? Yes. Same three steps. Same three steps. Alright? But you have to look here that you have to add this because remember, four is man's number and it's not a good number if you just use the four. But if four, like Brother Dale was talking about, if four death messengers, one, two, three, four, eight it down, are the horse riders, right? Then there's got to be four life messengers bring it back up and what? Take us up. Right. So four is not a bad number in redemption. Okay? What is, what is your number four? Your number four is one, two, and three mixed together. Right. Mixed with faith. Okay? Brings what? The word or the capstone, the headstone, right here. But then we must look and see that there's still these... Now, there's not eight seals. We know that for a fact. Right. Right. But remember, if you style... A sevens is always seven, 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 seven. Right. Because remember, Jesus Christ was the seventh seal, but he died. He had to die so that you and I one day are going to see that we don't have to. Okay? And then we're going to go into an eternal rest for earth, body, all souls, all animals, all plants, all earth is going to be in an eternal condition. That has brought you out of a seven into an, the eighth day. Amen. 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 Now, but look, you got, but you get the eighth day back here, spiritually. 
And your soul today, if you're born again, that's your future home. You're done. It can't go up, down, sideways. It can't even be condemned. That's our problem. We don't really see what that Genesis 126 man is. I don't think as much as we taught it and preached it, taught it and preached it, taught it and preached it. It's still something that is, if we ever see it, that's what's going to take us to that body change. Yes. Because the Genesis 126 man has never changed since eternity. It's just continued all the way across. We're the ones that drop down in time. Right. For redemption purposes, right? Mm -hmm. But what are we going back to? We're, we're, going, we're doing the timeline, not today, but in a few weeks. But that timeline, you've got eternity. Well, eternity just as far this way as it is this way. This we way. just drop down in time for a little while. Okay. And then we're going to go right what? Go right back up. Right? Yes. <coughs> Man fell on the seventh day because he wasn't in an eighth day. Right. Right. right? That's right. Man fell on the seventh day because he wasn't in an eighth day. Now Adam and his soul, that's what we're going to talk about this afternoon a little bit. Adam and his soul, that was the man that, that, that ruled everything. Like we were talking about Sunday afternoon. That man ruled the whole world. Right. Storm, wind, move this over here. Right. If he didn't want this island right here, he put it right over here. The whole island. Right. Creative. I mean, he was a little creator. That's what the prophet God said. What is the number of creation? Hmm? Or the number of completion? Is Seven is completion. Seven? Seven is completion. But you got to remember, if you don't go over into that one, like Brother Dale was talking about, if you don't go get in that eighth day, you got to come out of that seven. Right. That's right. So you can be eternal in a seven. Seven is completion. All the church ages are completed in a seven, but they're all dead. Right. The body changes that eighth day. Yes. Because God never come out of that eighth day. Right. He's always been in that in that eternal, you know, right. condition. He's always been in that eternal. We gotta remember that. He's never and he's never changed. I uh, was reading some quotes last night and it's just amazing how the prophet words things, and we'll get into them a little bit this afternoon about what Adam did and what Eve, because remember, Eve never got her name until she, until the fall. Right. She was Adam. Right. Her name was Adam. Yes. When God talked to Adam, he talked to Adam and Eve both, and he was talking to one person. Because remember, June and I, or your, your husband and wife, can be so one, and absolutely, you share yourself. I was telling uh, June the other day, I, and give you something to laugh about. But we've been married 37 years and I uh, was delivering mail. Saw mom and daddy that day too, but I was delivering mail, wasn't paying no attention, so I put the mail in the mailbox and I looked up in the mirror and there was this red car come. Well, it didn't, I didn't see the little yellow lights on top that Nanny Pop's old car. That's how I tell, it's our trailblazer, because you can't see that. Most trailblazers don't have. Anyway, so I looked back and I didn't see anything, so I just put the mail in the mailbox. Well, something just caught my eye and I looked over and this good looking girl had pulled right beside of me, <laughs> let the window down, and she said, What are you doing after work? <laughs> and I about blew a cylinder. <laughs> I was happy from that day. From that time, so late up in the evening, I was happy. Said, what are you doing today? What are you doing after work? <laughs> But you know what? But we're that's we're so one, and that's wonderful. But that has that is not even close to the agape love that we yeah, are right. that that we have with Christ. Yeah, I mean, right. that really that just blew my. I was about to have a fit, <laughs> and um, still turns me on. <laughs> it ought to be that way. You ought to not lose that. But remember, but look, June and I never DNA wise will never be one. Right. Right. Humanly, we'll never, we share each other, we share, we share everything we have, but we're never going to be one. But now Adam and Eve, when he said she's bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, he meant that. Right. She was literally, his body made manifest in another form. Now that's what we got to see with Jesus Christ. We got to become the literal body of Jesus Christ. Because if not, then we're just another person, and we're just we're just in filial love. We just and a lot of people love the Lord. Brother Brown will tell you a lot of people love the Lord, but they love Him in filial love, like we have love for each other. 
but they don't love, if you love him in agape love, that's what that agape love is, that's the number eight. That's an eternal love that never had a beginning, never had an end. Sometimes we don't understand it, we have to go through highs and we have to go through lows. That's not to say that me and you don't have problems. We don't do that every day. We don't pull over the side of the road and, you know, and, uh, and uh, proposition each other. But, and we have our bad days, but still. This right here is not a bad day and a good day, though. When we get to that point, body change, living in a... Because remember what I said last Sunday. The reason Adam come into the fall was that his flus were stopped. Well, what do you have to do? He started having to worry about a wife. He started having to worry about children. Brother, I'm telling you, we read it. we'll read it again, I think. Maybe I may have cut it out. Business affairs, home affairs, that's what I tell you. 80% of the time, we live in this world. Right. We think about what? Money, time, time to do things, work, family, wife, kid, daughter, son-in-law, daughter, you understand what I'm saying? A lot of that time is wasted, and not really wasted, but it's put in into our brain that 80% of the time we're not really thinking about God. I mean, really. If you be honest with yourself. There's only certain times that you'll see something and it'll spark it. And you'll but now remember, Adam wasn't that way before the fall. So that's what we going we're going back to that point to where we have and Paul told us to have the mind of Christ, but you can't have that's why he also said, Paul said, that a double-minded man is unstable. And we are. We're double-minded. We have the mind of Christ and we have the mind of the nature that we were born under. The nature of, of taking care of four girls and, and you know, you understand what I'm saying? That's why that, uh, that I don't uh, I don't see how some of you, you know, some, some sisters have the four kids, and but you know, Charles and John Wesley had what, 19 kids, and their mama had to wash clothes and everything else, but she sat down and read the Bible with them, and she studied with them and all that. But uh, but it's just telling you the human side, So we, but we got to come out of that human side in our thinking, and when we do think about God, this is what I'm about the other day, when we do think or have that 20% of thinking about God, it's valuable. Right. It's in revelation. That's right. It's not in just... You say, well, I, I thought about this. Well, you may be thinking about something. How many of you have been thinking, think, thinking, thinking about something, though, and God just drop down and, and bring it right into what you're thinking? Yes, and it really not be thinking about it. It'd be a situation or a, or thinking about what Christ did for you. You know, you do something for somebody, and then and then God say, well, that's what I did for you. You know. Right. So so that's what, but that's what we're dealing with. But we got to come closer now to the supernatural than we do the natural. But really, it's not going to change. It's probably going to get worse, you know, down at the squeeze part where we don't have a job, we don't have no money. We, you know what? God's going to say, you're just like Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham thought he could help me during his whole life. But when he got down to where he couldn't help me no more, he was dead. Right. His body was dead. He said, then Abraham said, I can't do it. I'm done. And that's what we're going to have to do to say, look. Because we sit and try to figure things out, and we do. Everybody does. Everybody's just trying to figure things out. But forget figuring things out. Just listen to what the Word says. All right, so now we've got the four life messengers. All right? We've got the four life messengers. We've got the four door death messengers. Eat it down. Four life messengers brought what? Brought us back to the Word. Under the prophet's message, it was so eaten down, even in the Pentecostal realm, when he did that restoration, what he was doing, he was restoring right, the restoration of the bride tree. I think that might be why he preached that message. Because he was restoring the bride back to an original condition. All right? Back to what? The Word. And then what's the Word got to do? The Word has got to then take us the rest of the way. Because you're not going to go back, you know, you're not going to go back and say, well, is this justification where I quit smoking, drinking, cussing? Not? No. That justification is... When you move into that one, you realize once and for all that you never did any of that. Right. That real Genesis 1, 26 man takes over. Realize you'll realize that you never that you never did the things you did. Listen, there's therefore now no condemnation. Now Paul picked up on something there, <coughs> even in the first church act. Because yes. what's our problem? We're condemned every day. That's right. What was the problem with the girl or the sister walking across to get her healing? 
Brother Brown said Satan condemned her and she didn't get her healing because she was a Christian. And he said, you do this, you did this, you did this. Right. Prostitute walks across. You know what she did the night before. She knew she, what she did that night. She knew what she was going to do the next night. Right. But she said, I believe what that man says. Yes. And God had to honor that faith of that prostitute that she believed what that man had said. Right. Well, let's start believing what the man said. Okay? Not just in the prayer line. Let's start believing the, right. the message, you know, that right. he brought. Because these seals, I'm telling you, these seals are... are are not for are not for babies. Right. Right. This is not baby food. Right. This is the this is the um, uh, prime rib at uh, at Texas Roadhouse or or Ruth Chris. You know, I mean this this is the meat part, and we got to start thinking like that. If we don't, then then we're going to be left behind, or we're going to have to, like Brother Dale said, we'll have to go by the grave. Which, listen, is not, and that's what I don't understand, people. I'm confessing to the body change, but if something happens and, 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 and I go, you know one thing's for sure. Something I couldn't reach, God knew that, and He's not going to be, He's not going to let His child go on. See, even in the Old Testament, when He let, who was it, um, Hezekiah live 15 more years. Right. Now, I don't believe he'd have done that if it had been a born-again child, son and daughter of God. You understand what I'm saying? He takes care of his children. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying Hezekiah's not going to be there. Hezekiah's not his child. But somebody, if we do that, we'll go, what? He's going to hell. No, he'll be there because he was a prophet in the Old Testament. Right. But he didn't have the new birth in his soul. Mm -hmm. right. If he had a new birth in his soul, it would have been different. Mm -hmm. yes. All right? So God would have took him home just like he did that brother um, Ramsey. Ramsey. Because Brother Brown said a few months later he was gone because he didn't want him, God didn't want him to mar his name. Well, what? He, he didn't let him go 15 years. He let him go just a few months That's right. to try to straighten up and then took him home. Yes, sir. Right? So you see what I'm saying with all these things. We, we must realize that as long as we're living and breathing, then we can move up into these steps. Yes. Even up the statue of a perfect man and even into... Because remember, look. There's no... Now, don't get me wrong here, but listen. There's no revelation of the seals from here down. Partial, but not full. Those seven seals was that headstone, that man, Jesus Christ, and what he had in his brain, not a human brain. God's got a brain. I hope you all know that. Okay. So he, he's got a brain that can be in seven billion places at one time. So, but that's that right there. That's getting us back to that Adam condition right here. Because Brother Brown said, whatever Adam lost, Christ brought us back to. And he ain't got to come back to bring it again. He brought it all while he was here. Jesus ain't got to come back. Brother Brown ain't got to come back. Jesus ain't going to come back in the corporate body. We know that. Right. We meet him in the air. Then we all come back later on right. Okay, to live through the thousand year millennium reign and then then it's going to be the eighth day future home. Everybody got that? Because yes. there will be time in the millennium. There will be daylight and dark time. A thousand years. Somebody's got to live a thousand years according to the 30 day calendar not the thousand years of 365 and 4. All right. So, and I'm not going to sit there with a calendar when we end the millennium. I'm not going to sit there in the calendar and start figuring things out. No. Done. Right. We're done with time. We're done with time. We're done with time. That's right. We're creatures of eternity. Right. <clears throat> we still have to wear a watch, though. Mm -hmm. We have to watch the time. <laughs> but uh, but when we get into that eighth day, or we're caught up in a revelation. Now, see, that's what that's the whole secret that God has before the foundation of the world. He was going to take an eternal thought and bring it into time. So we could get the ones out of time and bring them back into eternity. To me, that's just, that's why I said redemption. Brother Brown said, if you don't forget, he said, don't forget that word redemption. Why? He come out that eighth day and come down into our time, died, resurrected, ascended, and started pulling his children right back up into that eighth day. And Paul caught that revelation. He said, sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But it was only a partial. Remember, it's a partial revelation. This is not Jesus wasn't partially God. Right. right. You and I are part God because we have a humanity side that our parents brought. That's right. All right. Jesus was 
the fullness of the Godhead bodily, but now all of us collectively, as Brother Dale can preach, all of us collectively is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Right. Gifts, callings, preachers, teachers, people with wisdom, faith, that brings the whole, that's what Christ was. He was all that together. Right. And that's what brought us. The headstone came right down here. He was rejected. Remember, he became the cornerstone and started building his body back up. Why? He started building the bride tree. Amen? So now as we go through these seals, when you see these four horse riders leave, now that doesn't mean that Satan left. Right. No. Because in this fifth seal, you're going to see somebody died and somebody's going to get killed. So he's still there. But he's not going to be... I mean, the bride is not going to be in this time period. Is that all right? The bride's not going to be here. That's right. When we get what we're talking about, so everything that we talk about right here has got to lap back. You heard that word lap over before? <laughs> lap back into here to catch a body chain. Because you can be the word made flesh and your flesh still be getting older. Right. Grayer. Grayer. Bob. But once you come to this eighth day, because that's what we've got to bring. I told y'all last Sunday. And that's what hit me. Eternal life is in what? Is in the eighth day, right? Eternal life. But now, we're here, stuck in time and death. Why would that even want to come back here? Why would that whole sixth dimension want to come back into this dimension where there's death? Death reigns in this dimension. But when you find a group of people, and it may not be but just a few, just a little spot in this dimension that brings eternity so real to death. Like, well, Brother Luis said this way, but you gotta, you got to brush him off. Death this way. You don't bring him on when you brush him off. But when you brush death off, then what does that do? That brings them back into this dimension because they got to come back into this dimension to pick up their bodies. They can't get an earthly body where they're sitting at now. Right? right? They can't. Right. Brother Brown said, what? He said, well, we don't eat or, they said, we don't eat or drink over here. That's right. We're waiting, in other words. They're not, they're, and listen, they may be in an eighth day, and that, that may be, that's their theophany, but they're not in a 100% condition that they're supposed to be in. Okay. Right. Their soul's under the altar crying how long, but not to judge and avenge our blood. Because yeah. listen, they were a human on this earth. Right? Yes. They got a body laying somewhere. Mm -hmm. They got to come back and pick up so they can eat and drink and enjoy being a human way more than somebody pulling up beside you and saying, what are you doing at work? <laughs> I mean, really. Former things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's right. Amen. We're not gonna. We're not, they're not gonna come back into this dimension and go. Well, we gotta go to work. <laughs> no. Well, I wonder if. Uh, no. Now, Brother Brown told us they come back in the resurrection, and we were here for 30, 40 days. And you know what he said? Remember what he said? He said God knew they'd want to find out who made it and who didn't, so He gave them at 30, 40 days without him being here, and then we're going to be changed and caught up, and then we're going to go meet Jesus Christ in the air. At 30, 40 days, these people are going to walk around and going, you made it, you made it, you made it. Well, how about old Susan? Well, she didn't make it. You know? So, no offense to Susan, old Susan. But, uh, Joan, or... Yeah. But you know, you understand? But that's what the prophet God said. Yes, right. yes. He said that 30 to 40 days, he said these people coming back in the resurrection, God knew they'd want to know who made it and, and reu you know, reunite reunite right. with their families and who made it and who didn't make it, they figure all that out, and then we go home. Or we go listen, we don't go home. Right. We go to a marriage supper. That's not home. That's right. We we God just rented a banquet hall somewhere. Okay. You really? 
So that's not our home. Then when we come back here, this is our home potentially, but there's still stuff around here that we got to deal with. Amen? Because we judge the 12 tribes. Amen? Then we come to this is the home we always been looking for is that future home that comes down. And when it comes down, demons are gone. Everything's swallowed up. And as the Bible says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. But look, we get a glimpse of that though. Yes. Because you know, rapture is just just for a few minutes, we're talking about the rapture. Rapture is just an it's just because of an event that happened. The rapture will never take place until the dead come out of the ground. So we gotta get the dead out of the ground first. We gotta get that dimension here. Then we which are alive and remain shall be changed in the moment, twinkle of an eye. Caught up together, caught up. But rapture, really, now you gotta remember that word rapture is not always caught up. It's it's an it's a euphoric condition. Rapture is a condition that everything is just wonderful. Euphoria. Just you know that's and what it is, and hey, when we get when we get a body change and we look around and see all this other junk still going on around here, and we're changing the moment twinkling up an eye and caught up out of this into another dimension and let them fight it out over here. What a joyous time. Ain't got to worry about the IRS. That's right. We ain't got to worry about having money in our pocket. We can travel like a thought. That's right. Listen, we're not going to go sit in a building for three and a half years and just eat. No, we're going to be the happiest bunch of people. We're going to be all over the place. That's right. And like I said before, even if we did, could come back into this dimension, it wouldn't hurt us a bit. How are you going to hurt a glorified body? Jesus Christ, you know if somebody gets blowed up, the angel comes in and takes that soul out and it don't bother them one bit. Right. But in this dimension, when we have this kind of solid lifetime and matter, or life life and matter, the prophet said, then that's the problem. We've come into a dimension that there's boundaries. Right. And Jesus had boundaries. He never walked through a wall before before the resurrection. It was never recorded that he did. But buddy, after the resurrection, he'd be seen over here, be seen over here, be seen over here, and he'd come right through that concrete and just be as human as, as this right here. Thomas, touch me. Hold me. And that's what Brother Brown said. He went when he even when he went across the curtain of time, even in their theophany condition, he could hold them. There's a lot more to that theophany body than, than we think. Because what about God? We'll read it this afternoon. What about God killing two animals and, and stripping them of their skin? I ain't seen many ghosts do that. There must be somebody that's solid. Could come down in this dimension, slay two animals, pull the skins off of them, throw them back in the woods and say, here, put these on. Make that covering. But that's some things that we need to keep turning around in our mind because it's just not wild horse riders. It's not just red horse riders. No, this is a scene. It's a happening. Brother Brown said this is a scene. John saw a scene that happened. Same thing as Revelation 5. That was a scene, what, in another dimension. He saw a scene of a lamb coming and taking a book. All right? <clears throat> but I believe the lamb, when he, when he brought these seals, he brought the complete plan of redemption. And give it to a prophet, has to first, because the word comes to a prophet first. Then that prophet distributes it out. And and I was thinking today, you know, we sometimes we wonder why Brother Brown said the things he did. Well, don't we wonder sometimes what Jesus, the things Jesus said? Right. I mean it's a hard statement to say, eat my flesh and drink my blood, and never say anything about it. And then you go over there and this guy says, Well, let me go, let me go bury my mom. He said, let the dead bury the dead. He said, you let you come follow me. Now that's pretty harsh. And all of some of the things that you see, now that wasn't just, well, that was the human Jesus. No, that was, he was God Almighty all the time, all right? And he wasn't, he didn't slip into a second person or a third person and then jump back to the first person. No, he was, 
That was the mind of God. Sure, there was things like, let's go eat, or what are we going to eat today? Absolutely, that's the human part. <coughs> but what's written in that Bible, I think the Bible said it was all given for examples. Yeah. Everything, yeah. not just pieces of it, was given yeah. for examples. You read in Paul's writings to Timotheus, and he talks about the other people and the saints of his Ephesus, and he's writing a letter, and you say, well, that's the eternal word of God. Well, it's in there for something. That's right. For somebody to catch that, right. and and how many times have you read something though, and a preacher come in and preach on it, and you say, "Well, I never seen it like that." Before. That's right. I mean, I'm going back to the little. I like the little gospels, Timothy's and yes. and Titus and John, little John, first, second, third John, and I'm reading them now. And man, you, it's just and all it is though is I mean, I don't mean that. Paul is sitting down and he's going, right. "I came to visit you, and this is what I saw." Right. Right. This is what you did, and this is what a Christian should do. I saw you at, and I pray that God will preserve you. And he's writing a letter, just like I'd write a letter to, to, to Brother Aaron if he was off in another country. And God thought so much of that, it was his eternal word coming down, they put it in the Bible. I'm sure when Paul was writing that, he was writing a letter. But somebody got a hold of that letter, and somebody got a connection with the Almighty, and the Almighty says, That's, uh, that was me talking. That wasn't just Paul, that was me talking. Put that in the Bible. Hello? I mean, the 66 books of the Bible is not 67. Man has tried to put the book of Judas and the book of this and the book of Maccabees, but see, God never, but he put them 66 books together and he said, here, this is what you're going to learn from. This is what you're going to learn from. And if it's Paul talking to Timothy over in Thessalonians to the Thessalonians, that's my, that's my eternal word of God. That's me talking to you, telling you to go talk to somebody else. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Okay? Is that all right? Amen. So before we go, one more time. You got your opening of the seals up to four, and then we take a rapture. Combat beasts are gone. Mm -hmm. But we have to lap this back. Let's get take that out for the moment. We gotta take these and we gotta lap them back over here. Because to the bride of Jesus Christ, we don't get this in its natural form. So we must get it in a spiritual form. And see the different layers that this justification is not Brother Brown said, he said, if I didn't rob a bank, I'm not guilty. That's right. He said, now if somebody can say I did it, remember, we'll read it. Where, I, I can't remember what book it's in, but he goes through. Um, you did it. And then the real you. And then, you know, you get it to number three. We'll read it again. And then, I mean, number two and then number three, he goes to what the real you didn't do it start with. He said, you said, Brother Evan, you robbed a bank yesterday. I wasn't there. I, I didn't do it. I was accused of doing it. But I wasn't even there. So that's the same thing with this justification right here. That's not as if, no, it's as if you didn't do it as number two. It's not as if you never did it. The real you never did it in the first place. Now, when we come to that, then you've come into this revelation that this only does what this inside tells it to do. Only. Okay? So it's not your flesh, it's your problem. Okay? Now, no Brother Brown said when God put Adam and Eve in flesh, they fell. Why? Because they were finally in a form that they could fall. Just as 126 man couldn't fall, as long as they stay spirit man, there's no sex involved. You know, let's just be plain. There's no, there's no carnal mind. There's no lust. It's all um, agape love. But he put them in, in flesh to what? To rule the ground so that, so that the animals could see their leader, could see the person that, that, that they're dealing with, the beast and all that. But God knew when he put them in human flesh, they were going to fall. And the flesh only manifested... When she got the carnal mind, her body manifested it. But remember, the seed was planted up here first before it was planted anywhere else. All right, let's go. Bob, you up next Sunday.